everybody, I'm Anna Kachikian and this is the Anna Report where every Wednesday I sit with you guys and we discuss dating and relationships. And this week's topic is victim versus vulnerability and what is the difference between the two. And I've got a special guest today, Brandon Alexander from New Age Gents coming on live with us. I needed a male's perspective and I found the, the topic idea from Brandon's Instagram page and so I thought he would be the perfect person to bring on to discuss the topic. I'm drinking whiskey. I actually haven't had wine in a, in a minute uh, because I'm still fighting this nasty cold so I'm drinking I've been drinking whiskey. It's been very soothing on the throat. Um, and of course, I'm having my Macallan. <laughs> Shocker. Oh, yeah. Notice how I don't have a lot left in my glass. Um, it's not that I drank it all. It's just that I have tennis tonight. So I really, I really can't get drunk and go play tennis. All right. So really quickly, I want to introduce the topic and then I want to bring Brandon on because I have a lot to say. I know he has a lot to say. Um, it's a deep convo. It's a deep topic. It's a deep conversation. And um, I'm ready to dive in if you guys are. So uh, yeah, Brandon, say something. I'm going to bring you on because I, it's like, it's like, it's all coming to me. It's all coming to me, Brandon. I need you here with me. Um, and if you are a man watching this, you should definitely uh, tune in right now. Um, and if you are a woman watching this, you should definitely tune in, tune in because you are going to find things that you're like, holy shit, my husband has done that. My boyfriend, fiance, uh, men have done that in my life. Uh, and then the guys are going to be like, shit, that's me. How do I uh, fix that? How do I get over this victim mentality? How do I stop this? <laughs> hey, Brandon, what's up? Hey, how's it going? Can you hear me okay? I hear you great. Can you hear me? Yep, perfectly. Awesome. Do you want to move? move Are we in good? Are we good on the light? Bit? Everything's good. Yeah, it's a, it's it's a little foggy. Like you you look like okay. you're sitting in a in a cloud of fog. <laughs> I don't know why. Maybe, oh, there, that, move in. That's why. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Move this, in a this is better. Bit. There you go. It's the light there we go. between you. That's okay. Why. Okay. Perfect. Awesome. All right, everybody. So this is Brandon Alexander from New Age Gents, and. What's up, um, and Brandon posted something about vulnerability, and and then we got to talking, and we got oh cheers, there we go. It's water, <laughs> not whiskey today. I I should be drinking water too before um, <laughs> before tennis, but you know I I, I got yeah. a cheap throat. I got a cheap Normally it would throat. be whiskey. Normally I would have some whiskey, but today I'm okay. going with water. Define for me what vulnerability means to you as a man. Sure. Um, vulnerability for me is just having an openness, a willingness to be open. Uh, I think a lot of times callousness in life can make us um, closed off and not as open uh, or you're afraid to allow somebody in. And so vulnerability for me, I think, is allowing people to um, letting them in, sharing your life, not being a uh, surface. You know, if someone's like, how are you doing? A lot of times we have a default. You know, I'm okay. Uh, but if you trust that person, you should be able to open up and share with them what's going on with you on the inside, not just, you know, I'm okay, I'm fine, and, and things like that. So vulnerability is, is being able to trust and open up. That's for me. And it doesn't necessarily apply to just in relationships towards women, right? It, it, it applies in, to life in general, right? Life in general, yeah. It, I mean, especially with like to... men in your life. So, it's, so you don't have to start practicing vulnerability when you get a girlfriend. You can start practicing vulnerability when you're single. And that way, when you actually do find someone, you're able right. to like, be vulnerable and connect with, with somebody on like, a much deeper level. Which is Here's the thing. I think a lot of guys, they get into these packs or they get into like a tribe or whatever. And, and, it's, and it opens them up to experiencing things in a different level if you have that. Like, if you uh -huh. don't have a tribe that, that opens you up to be vulnerable and to be honest, uh, it, it's not a good place to be because if everyone's doing the same thing, you're going to do what you're seeing. 
If no one's opening up, if no one's sharing, you're going to do exactly what they're doing. And so it's really good for men in while they're single or while they're in transition or whatever it is. You could be married and divorced. What you do in that in between and in your private life really matters. It, it really matters for you to take the time to be around people who are going to be with you to grow, that are going to call you out and they know you're not opening up and being honest and that you can share with in a real way. Like you need to be able to share in a real way. If you don't have that, it's toxic to you. It'll, okay. it'll eat you up on the inside. So now we know what the vulnerability is, right? Now, yeah. And I, yeah, and, yeah. I, and I talk about being vulnerable with the guys all the time, but, um, but we, when we talk, we kind of somehow like realize that there's the victim mentality and then there's the, right. there's the vulner, vulnerability aspect of right. really being open, right? Um, right? And what's the difference? The difference is that, you know, when you're playing the, when you are playing the victim, I, you know, guys will begin to defend themselves to me. Yes. Like, well, well I, you know, like, I, I didn't walk you to my car. I didn't walk <laughs> you to the car because I don't know. It's like, okay, stop defending yourself. Right. Or, Right. Like to blame someone else. It's like, well, you know, my buddy was like asking me questions and then I just didn't have to get a chance. And you're like, oh, okay, so we're going to blame someone else now. Um, right. Or complaining about everything all the time. Like why, why you are never content with life. You're just complaining yeah. constantly. That's not, that's the victim mentality. That's not, that's not healthy. That's not like it's not oh, healthy. Yeah. You that's, know, it's not healthy. And, um, and then, of course, the big one is like, feel sorry for me. Feel sorry for me. And a lot of guys confuse the feel sorry for me for being yeah. vulnerable because they'll turn that around on you and they'll say, well, I opened up to her. Yeah. But you, but she shut me down. I was like, you didn't open up. You were basically wanting her to feel sorry for you. Right. And yeah. that actually pisses us off even more <laughs> because in your own experience, what do you feel like a, 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 an experience you had with true vulnerability from a man? Like, what did you see? Like, what made you feel like, OK, he's being authentic, he's being real. In what situation would you say you saw that? Um, I had a I had a guy drop a huge bomb on me, like something okay. where I was like, fuck. Right. And um and he sat across from me, and not once did he play the victim card. Not mm. once did he not take responsibility. Yeah. Um, not once did he, um, uh, you know, start to defend himself. Didn't he? Didn't use a defensive card. Sure. He was, like owning up to it. Um, he didn't make me feel sorry for him. Mm. He wasn't like, oh, I was like that because of this situation. I this happened because of that situation. He kind of just dropped the bomb and was like, I have to be honest with you. And I was like, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Um, at the moment, it sucks. Um, mm. But it was like, I, I couldn't play. I couldn't get upset with him and say, mm. well, well, you sound stupid because you're just said this now you're defending yourself right i couldn't mm -hmm. play that card i couldn't say right. to him, well now you're defending right. yourself now the, now we're fighting right i couldn't say why are you blaming this other person for your shitty decision right i couldn't um i wasn't upset by him making him making me feel sorry for him because mm -hmm. he didn't he didn't do he, there was no like oh i feel sorry for you like it was just like well this is it. <laughs> this is it. Um, yeah. So he wasn't complaining about it. It was just, he just laid it out and I just kind of had to digest it all. And the thing of, yeah, the thing about truth is that I found that you don't have to explain. If it's the truth, there's, there, you don't need to, to, to continue to justify or to defend. And this is something that oh, no, we all no, no, do. No, no. But you just have to be ready to answer questions. Exactly. Exactly. Have, but but that's where but that's where the the problem is with with a lot of people, not even just men, sure. is that sure. they know that if they do that, then they're going to have to be ready to add, answer questions, and they're yeah. going to have to answer questions that's not going to feed their ego, that's going right. to make them feel uncomfortable, and people don't right. want to be in those situations. Right. And that's what vulnerability is. It's not shame. Sure. You know, Brene Brown always talks about like shame versus vulnerability. It's not shame. I don't think that you should be shameful for, for having to answer these 
legitimate questions. Like, right. just, just get through the right. tough times. Answer the questions, God damn it. Yeah. <laughs> like, it, it, it's, for me, too, I think it's just having um, the maturity, the emotional maturity, too, to, to, to understand and to see uh, what kind of situation you've got yourself into. Maturity yeah. changes everything. And I think with a lot of men, we, we all have to be honest with where we're at in life and uh -huh. be honest here too. Like, hey, buddy, you can work on this. You can grow in this area. And even when, when you get into a situation where it's like, like the one you had where he laid it all out for you, he shared what he had to share, that was a very mature decision, even though it might have felt a certain particular way on your end. You know what I'm saying? Well, and I'm sometimes, sure I too, right? Imagine, right? imagine what... Because he was like, I, I will probably never see this girl again. Right. After I drop right. this bomb, right? Right. So, so to, to, to be uh, ready for something like that as well is, right. is significant. But it's that, very significant. But that's, that's what I'm trying to say is that if you are able to be that vulnerable, yeah. it almost it makes for a seamless connection sure. with a woman. Yeah. I don't know how to explain it, but but uh, uh, any woman who's in tune with her life and her body and her uh, spirituality uh, yeah. is seeking for that depth, for a deeper connection. Sure. And vulnerability is the key to that connection. And again, mm. there's a fine line. You have to be careful. It's not playing the victim. It's not like, well, I told her about my cancer. And yeah. crying, and I was like, there's a delivery for that, dude. You, right. You can't, like, even even cancer, like, you cannot play the victim card. <laughs> Why are you up? I'm serious. No, you. I, I get you. I hear you. It, for even, me, I think even the, the, that, you can drop that bomb and just, like, the girl's like, oh, boy. Oh. Right, right. So I think also with all of this, if, to take it kind of on a different lane, a different direction. Yeah. Uh, for your own emotional health, we have to talk about the man in his own life, right? And so, uh, yeah. one of the big things in men is suicide and, and explosive behavior and explosive moments of yeah. of, of um, not unpacking. I mean, you see it with soldiers and PTSD. Uh, you mm -hmm. see it with men who have been molested and young boys who have been molested. If they don't share, if they don't get that stuff out, uh, it's going to manifest in different ways. And so, for me, the bigger picture outside of relationship is like the, what's going on with you emotionally in your life and are you in a healthy place emotionally to process. All right. Processing is great. Bra Brandon, you brought up a really good point. So I guess yeah. the big question is when is a good time to, when is an appropriate time to show emotion? To show emotion? Um, when, it's, when it's called for. If the right. moment's called for. You know, I think um, there's a time and place for everything, uh, honestly. And you have to know who you're sitting across from. Not everyone can handle your story. You know, they're not ready for it. They may not be asking for it. And to, to um, almost give it to them without asking isn't fair to them because if they don't respond the way you're expecting to, you're setting yourself up for failure. And so I think even us, even us talking, you know, the other day, when you and I talked, um, it felt safe to explore what this conversation and topic would look like. If I didn't feel safe with you, you wouldn't have had that conversation. Yeah. And so if there's a level of safety and comfort you have to have with somebody to know what you can share, what you can't share, uh, what's too much, um, what's not enough, because withholding or holding back sometimes isn't healthy either. But um, what, what if a guy says, what if, what if, what if, you know, one of the viewers, a lot of the viewers here are like, when is that, how do I know that there's that safe, like, I felt safe with her, and I sure. went to her, or, you know, I opened up to her, and she yeah. kind of shut me down. And to mm -hmm. be honest with you, a lot of these scenarios, when they're like, oh, this is what I said to her, I'm like, why are you crying? Like, don't. I think sometimes you have to be able to say it and walk away. And when you have an ex expectation of how you want them to respond, you're going to yeah. be disappointed. And so if you're going into it and you want to just share from your heart, uh, if you don't get the response you want, then you, you kind of just have to, like, suck it up. And that's not a man-up thing. That's not. It's just you have to realize, like, you can't force that person to be ready to be compassionate. You can't force that person to be empathetic. You can't yeah. force that person to, to respond in a way that's, that speaks to you yeah. if they don't give you that. But if they do give it to you, oh my God, great, that's amazing. But it doesn't, it doesn't justify closing up. It doesn't justify you uh, 
um, deciding that now you want to be cold or callous. If you want to share, share. But don't share for the sake of, like, getting a response. So That's not – go ahead. What are healthy ways of expressing these emotions? Um, there's different emotions. There's different things. I think we'll start first with – I'll start first with just male-to-male uh, -male relationships. So I have a friend of mine who's like an accountability partner, and he's, uh -huh. always, he's always checking me. He's always sharing with me and telling me where I'm at in life because he can see it from an outside perspective. Uh -huh. And whenever, um, whenever I'm out of alignment, he knows it's safe for him to come to me, uh, even if it's like real hard, even if it's like, yo, get your ish together. And I can receive it because we have that relationship and rapport. He knows he can't do that with other people because it, it'll either make them shut down or it'll make them withdraw. But he knows with me, it, it pulls out the best in me. Um, so for men, you need to know who you have in your life and who you can share with in what way that's going to best suit them. So someone might need a more straightforward, direct approach. Some people might need a more nurturing approach. But no, you have to know the people in your life. You just have to know them. And then you have you'll to know, know who you go to, right? For you, don't have to, you, you have to know who you go to for what. That's like a part of like growing up. Like yeah, you grow it is. up and you and you begin to like identify people in your life. Like I, you know, yeah. this is this is my person for this and that's my go to person for that. And I can't you go can't to him for money if he's my relationship guy. You know what I'm saying? My my money guy's my money guy, my relationship guy's my relationship guy. The guy that I hoop with is the guy that I hoop with, or the clip that I hoop with is the clip that I hoop with. You you don't go to everyone for everything. It, it's just not and if you do have that, it's probably rare, but find out who you can go to for what um, in, in, in your male relationships. Now, in, in the sense how, of... How can men uh, create these relationships? Because I feel like it's harder for guys to make friends than women. Women were just kind of... Yeah. Like... Yeah. Um, I think for me, it is finding men... Finding men that you can connect with because you, you can tell from the encounter how open they are to your first encounter. Mm -hmm. Hi, nice to meet you. X, Y, and Z. What do you do? Where do you work? A oh, word. That's dope. Like, if, in that moment and in that time, you can vibe and you can see, is this something that I want to continue to grow on and, and grow with? And a lot of times, a lot of guys, you can kind of sense and discern uh, what kind of guy they are from Jump Street just from their actions. You know, mm -hmm. you can really tell someone who and who someone is by their actions. So just read the signs. Don't like read too much into it. Keep it real simple. Either this guy is someone I can connect with or this guy is someone I can mm -hmm. connect with. And he'll let you know. Either he'll, he'll be open to it or he'll be closed off. And a lot of times um, you can meet someone initially, but they still want to see. They want to vet you to see how long is this guy going to stick around because I want to trust him before I share with him. And sometimes those processes can be two weeks, two years. Six years before someone opens up, it depends on that guy. But gauge that. But that initial re uh, interaction and, like, things help. You know, if you're in a sports activity, if you're going to a bar, if you're going out to a social event, more than likely those guys you're meeting there have similar interests. So that's going to be a conversation. Similar interests. That's what I was thinking. I was like, people are like-minded. Like Like-minded yeah. people. That's important. Yeah. Um, now... Would you say vulnerability and crying go hand in hand or no? They, um, Where does crying and men and vulnerability tie in for you? I don't think crying and vulnerability are the same thing. I think you can cry without being open. Okay. Your body has to release it. Yeah. It just has to. Yeah. Now, if you can identify why you're crying, that's vulnerability. To me, that's mm -hmm. my opinion on mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. is being able to assess and see, this is making me cry because it, 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 it hit me here. I know men who say, I don't know why. If you say, I don't know why, then you're not in touch enough with yourself, uh, in a sense, to understand that. It's a beginning of vulnerability to say, I don't know. Um, but I think if, if you're just closed off the entire experience, you can still cry. Yeah. Something can piss you off enough to make you cry. Something can break your heart enough to make you cry. A family member can, can, can pass away and make you cry. The wind blows too hard. It's going to make you cry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That doesn't make you vulnerable. Vulner vulnerability is the willingness to be open, open and honest. Yeah. A willingness. Yeah. You know? And do you think um, it's okay to cry while you're being vulnerable? 
Is it okay for men to cry while they're being vulnerable? Yes, one thousand percent. It's 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 definitely okay. I've cried. I've cried for joy. I've cried for heartbreak. I've cried for mm -hmm. victories. I've cried for losses. And it really, um, it's a release of some sort. And there's been times that we talked about this on the phone. There's been yeah. times where um, I couldn't cry for a season of my life. Yeah. I just couldn't. I couldn't get the tears to flow. I could. I could share. I could talk. I can. I could get all the emotions out. Yeah. But the actual tears flowing, they yeah. weren't coming. I would even force myself. I would like sit there and do this ugly thing, and I'd be like, oh, my God, come on, tears, give me tears. And yeah. they wouldn't come, yeah. you know? So if, if you're a guy and you're watching, um, and you're not crying and you want to cry, uh, it's okay if they're not coming right now. Just wait. Just wait for your tears to flow freely. Just wait and see what happens and, and let your body speak to you. Yeah. You, you Trust your body. Trust your heart. Trust your instincts. It's all going to it's gonna tell you when and when the time is right. And from, from my perspective, we kind of touched on this as well, is, you know, I've had a guy cry in front of me. Yeah. Sheer vulnerability, like sharing something very openly. And I was right. like, oh, my God. Like, I felt so, um, I felt his pain, you know. I really, truly really felt his pain. Yeah. And I, I sympathized with him. I was very empathetic for what he was going through. And sure. I've also had a guy cry because he was playing the victim card, and I just wanted to fucking slap him. I was just like, this, get him out of my face. I'm going to mur- I, Mom, you remember this. I, I, I locked myself. I was like, I'm going to kill that guy. I was like, yeah. I'm, if you let me, I will strangle him who's crying yeah. outside my door right now. Like, yeah. get him away from me. I right. just couldn't handle the crying right. from this guy who was yeah. just like playing the victim card. Like, oh, you're okay. Shut up. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So there's two. There's like, there, you've got the two. The, the, it's like, so it's okay to cry, but. But but I can read when you're crying because you want me to feel s for a pity fuck, you know? What you just said was important. Like, it's like you can read it. You have to be able to read it. You have to be able to know, like, is it authentic? Is it genuine? Where is it coming just from? So obvious when yeah. anybody plays the victim card. And, mm -hmm. uh, and you know, the, the whole victim mentality is like you – it's almost like the uh, these people have 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 lived this have existed as a victim for so long they don't even sure. know how else to be but that That's yeah kind of how they've gotten through life that their whole their whole life so part of that so, has to do with like previous hurt previous hurt previous rejection previous yep. um any situation where they just felt like and here's the thing a lot of guys will put themselves out there right they'll, they'll, you've seen hitch you've seen the movie hitch yeah i think the movie's a perfect example of that is this guy who was head over heels for somebody he loved her he didn't get the love he wanted back and uh eventually he just kind of became cold like a player in a sense because he didn't want to be hurt like that again i think it's a really good example of vulnerability um versus being a victim what a lot of guys end up doing is instead of uh instead of closing completely off they keep looking for that again they they kind of like having that feeling of like uh, no one loves me, whatever the case may be. And it's a very dysfunctional way of living because it continues to feed this part of them. It's where robbing they can, them of their joy. It's robbing them of their joy, but they think that they're getting, it's, and it's a weird dysfunctional cycle. And if they don't heal properly and they don't do the work that it takes, they're going to continue that cycle because they, yeah. they're just caught up in it. And, I've, and on my end, I've dated women like that. Mm -hmm. who are the victim and they're like oh my god you're gonna do this to me and you're gonna do and i'm like yo we only been together two weeks how are you already <laughs> predicting that i'm gonna cheat on you or i'm gonna yeah. leave you how are you predicting that already and there's men out there like that and I, I don't know if that guy was like that but i also know men who um the victim for them is more so um tony robbins has a great quote he says heal the boy and the man will appear yeah right yeah. there's men who haven't healed the boy on the inside and that's what you're getting the crying, the fit, the tantrums, it's the boy in him coming out. It's the immaturity, yeah. it's the immaturity in emotion and understanding. Yeah. And in even having the maturity to sit down and have an adult conversation and not lash out at you because mm -hmm. you didn't give him back what he was looking for. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Um, and there's no perfect guy, I think, also. There's no guy that doesn't have some type of dysfunction, some type of unhealthy behavior, some type of unhealthy traits and habits. 
But I think maturity says I will sit back, I will look at my side of the relationship, the male relationships, the female relationships, the solid friendships, the romantic ones. I'll look at them. I'll be honest with myself about how I'm acting and how I'm behaving in them and then go from there. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. It's not perfection that you're looking for. It's just, I want to be better. I want to take and, care of me and I want to be better. And just, and just also a re re reminder for the guys is that this takes years. This, time. You are, Lots of time. You're, you're literally reinventing your identity into yes. you becoming the new version of yourself. Yes. All right? Yeah. Yeah. But it takes years. Yeah. Um, you have to be so patient with yourself, um, and and just relax. Like you'll you'll get there as long as you're you know you're you're, you're working on it every day. Um, but um, you know, so and you have people that 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 want to like that want to see you do good. That want to see you win. Because if they want to see you win, they're not going to let you sit stagnant in a certain place. I've got some friends in my life right now yep. who are very adamant about sitting down and figuring out and asking me why. Why did you do this? Why did this happen? Why do you think you did this? And when they ask me those asking questions, you? they're asking me these questions. Okay. Yeah. And when I, when I have to answer them, I have to reflect and say, this is where that came from. This is why I'm doing this. Because when you get to the root of something, you can really see the fruit you're bearing. Let me ask you this, when they're Go asking you these questions, at what point are you thinking, do I tell, uh, should I be honest? Because I think a lot of times, uh, people are very um, dishonest with, yeah. with in, in public. And yeah. so because of that dishonesty, they begin to believe their lies of who they sure. are. Sure. And so, <laughs> <laughs> what is that? What is, mom, what's the mom is laughing. She found that very funny. <laughs> hi, mom. Uh, Brandon says hi. Hi, hi. So uh, you know, there these people. So after all these years, you know, you know, let's take men for example. Sure. At that point, it's like they've got the maturity, they've got the car, they got the house, they got the career, but they can't hold down a woman. Right. And they're just like, why? Why? Right. Um, well, that's because you're living a lie. Like, you sure. think you're fearless. You think you're this. You think you're that. And you're not. Sure. You're sure. not. You know why you're not? Because you're human. And right. I want to connect with you on a, on a much deeper humanly level. And when I can't connect with you, I'm out. I'm out. So honesty equals connection for you. Of course. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think also, um, I don't know if it's necessarily, because you were asking me about, I, I never question if I should tell the truth when they're asking me questions. What do you mean? Is that, well, you were asking me how, when I, oh, when what, how you questions. respond when they ask you? Yeah, when you're saying, do I ever think, you know, do I have to be honest? It never crosses my mind to not be honest. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Do you know what I'm saying? I'm never like, ooh, I should lie about this or I should hide this. You're not intentionally doing it. You're just... Right. You have lied about being um, a caring person for so long. Sure. That you think you're caring, but you're the yeah. most selfish human being that's ever sure. walked this planet. Right. But you're like, I'm the most caring person, but everything that you care about only... When you look back at it, you, everything that you do is to make yourself good, feel good about it. Sure. Yeah. So for you to say I'm a caring person and your mm -hmm. actions are actually questionable. Saying something different. Well, it's like right. you're doing those things for the wrong reasons. Right. For other right. people. And you're calling yourself a caring person. Right. So at that right. point, so when somebody asks you, do you think you're a caring person? You say, yes, you're lying. Right. That's what I'm saying. That's what I mean. Like right. when your friends ask you these questions about yourself, do you ever stop and go, can I be so open mm, and honest? Sure. Or yeah. am I going to be judged if I'm honest with the guys about this stuff? Some people do though. Some people freak out. They get, they freak out when they, when someone decides to ask like a direct question, they freak out. Their world changes because they don't want to handle the confrontation and conflict. They freak yeah. out. That's yeah, because it's how it's how how they're gonna feel when they're answering these uncomfortable uh, yeah. questions, right? Yeah. So, 
Yeah. Brendan, we're at 32 minutes in. Um, that's our time, but it was so good to have you. Absolutely. And uh, talk about this really fascinating conversation that uh, we can go on and on and on about this. So I'd love to have yes. you back on, all right? Um, Absolutely. Thank you so much. And thank I'll you. talk to you on Instagram. <laughs> all right. Have a good night. Have a good Bye. one. Uh, that was Brandon Alexander, um, a friend of mine who 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 talks. His 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 Instagram account is new uh, new age gents. So his audience is men. He talks to men about being gentlemen, and 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 our audiences uh, collide are the same. And so I had to have him on on this topic really quickly. Um, I wanted to go through some of your questions. Edo says honesty is good, but sometimes white lies that make a person happy is good too. That's a whole different topic. I think I think I I almost couldn't put a list together of white lies that are okay and white lies is just they're not white lies they're lies. Um, but I'm also very strict on that. For me, it's just like just say it, just say it, just say it. That's where I'm at. I wanted to talk to you guys about the sore matrix back in stock. Uh, I was out for a minute, but I'm back with the sore matrix go to theannareport.com and you can order your soulmate shirts there. Um, Ralph says soulmate hype. It's all part of the whole The Anna Report weekly uh, show where I kind of explain to you guys the, um, the importance of, 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 of soaring yourself with yourself first and then, and then um, finding your own soulmate. All right, you guys, have a good night. Cheers, and off to tennis I go. Well, have a good night. Bye.